In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted the eels for the Achillean Guard models for Eidneth Deepkin for the Age of Sigmar game. We're starting right now. Hey guys, it's Jarrett, Mini Junkie. These are the guys we're painting today. Surprisingly, I mean, they look so simple, but they actually took me quite a while to paint, and I don't know why. I guess they're kind of fiddly. Putting them on the base, I know notoriously they've been challenging for people to get them to stay on the stands because the connection point's very small. And I'm finding I don't love painting mounted miniatures. And the reason is each one kind of feels like painting two different miniatures because you got to paint the mount or the rider kind of separately, usually. And I did in this case. And then, the, and then paint the mount and then find a way to put them back together. I don't know. It just seems like it takes a long time. In the end, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out, although I did make a hilarious mistake that you're going to see later in the video. So you don't want to miss this one because I can't even believe what I did. I'm not going to spoil it. I want you to see later. I'm going to live with it though. And what's kind of neat is, so, okay, two things. One is I'm not painting the actual riders themselves in this video. And the reason for that is I painted them the exact same way that I painted the Namarty Thralls, which you can see in the video here, if you want to check it out, but check it out later maybe. But what what is cool is because like what I'm trying to do is with these fishier models, and you saw this in the Volturnus tutorials, I'm trying to use these uh, Green Stuff World color shift paints. So they create a really cool, you know, shifting paint look as you move the model around. What's really super neat about this is you'll see that the Martian green that I used uh, for these, these guys looks purple in the bottle. Like it's a bottle of purple paint that turns mostly green. So really cool stuff. Micro review. I really like these. I recommend them for specifically you know, if you have a good use for something that's going to have shifting colors, don't force it into your color schemes, I wouldn't say. But if you find, like, these guys, these aquatic, fishy kind of creatures seem perfect for them. So that's why I'm using them here. I recommend them. I think they're really cool and they're fun to use. I use them only through airbrush, though, and I don't know how well they would hand brush. That's enough talking. Let's get to it, and I'll show you how I painted these, and I'll show you how I goofed them up. But just before we do that, if you're a fan of the wargaming and miniature gaming hobby, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification so you stay up to date on all these videos I'm releasing. So here's the look at the final product we're going for here. A couple close-ups. I'm recording this after getting super frustrated playing Dark Souls Remastered, so I'm going to try to keep that tension out of my voice for you guys. Uh, before I primed, I stuck some blue tack or poster tack to their butts and saddles so that when I glue them, I can use plastic glue and it'll uh, melt the plastic and join them nice and strong. I also used a bit to try and figure out a way to hang on to these guys while I was painting them, which is quite awkward. The riders and everything along the bottom uh, side of each eel was done with a white primer. I put a base color of uh, sand, ivory, Vallejo air along the bottom, like the underbelly. Now for the color shift paints, the best result, I would say, or at least per the instructions, is to use a gloss black primer as an undercoat. So I'm doing that along the top um, side of the top face of the eels, and then you know, that's going to sort of blend into that ivory sand color base coat I've got along the bottom. See what I mean? How it's purple in the bottle and it's Martian green. I just think that's just mind blowing. Um, but yeah, when you apply it, it doesn't go on purple. And I was following the instructions for a change and just doing light coats and allowing it to dry between coats. And as an acrylic paint, as with most acrylic paints, the coats dry super fast. So really, you don't have to wait long. It's just that in a couple of previous attempts to use this paint, I've gone much too thick too quickly. But yeah, I like how this gives a greenish purple iridescent color to the eel. I think it looks very underwater-ish somehow. Anyway, after doing that, I applied some aged white as a highlight with my airbrush along the bottom portion where we previously applied the sand color. I'm kind of trying to blend the area between that iridescent color shift and the lighter underbelly. I 
I wanted the underbelly to be yellow, basically, so I used uh, Cassandora yellow. Um, it really does a great job of staining the color underneath it. Um, it's not, I mean, it is a wash, but it's a very heavy tinting wash, so it does a great job of turning things yellow. And yeah, here again, I'm using the Martian green that actually looks purple to, again, try to blend the two, the transition between those two areas um, by spraying like against, how, how do I put this, against the angle so that it's hitting the top raised portion of its body and not hitting the underbelly. We'll see if you actually can tell what I meant by that explanation, which is not one of my better ones. For the fins, a base coat of Zemisi Desert, and in hindsight, I don't know why I didn't just use Averland Sunset, which is a base and would have gone on a lot easier. This I had to apply two, three thin coats, whatever, to get a decent coverage, which is my way of saying just use Averland Sunset and it'd be easier. My favorite step with Ideneth Cobalt Al Alchemy and Emerald Alchemy uh, blended 50-50. You get that sort of nice greenish blue armor color, although there isn't much of it on the eels. Basically, their helmet and cheek plates and the back of their saddles. Right out of the bottle with Fugan Orange Shade to really darken and shade and you know tint and color the um, yellow color we put down on the fins. Gives a nice bright orangey yellow color for these. The metals are based with any kind of gun metal. You can use lead belcher if you want. I used a Vallejo Premium Air gun metal, doing that blade along the top of the eel's head on one of them and painting the metal part of the saddle. I used a base coat of Mornfang Brown on the saddle and the straps that hold on the armor plates and things like that. Uh, you can use any color brown you want. I recommend like a medium brown. Next up, I highlighted the sort of ribbing of the fins with P3 Privateer Press Paint um, Heartfire Yellow. I think any bright golden yellow you have on hand would work just fine for this. For the tassels that are flying out behind them, I did the same thing I do on most of my Idena Deepkin. I paint them white and then later we're going to color them yellow and wash them orange. Pretty basic step, Screamer Pink, paint the inside of all their mouths. There isn't much mouth showing on most of them. I painted various metal embellishments on them, like the clasps of their reins uh, with a gold. I used Retributor Armor. You can use any gold you prefer. Super simple step, I painted the teeth Ushab Tibong. Highlighted the metal areas like the blade on his head and the, and the uh, metal saddle with Stormhole Silver. You can use any silver you like. Dinted the um, tassels yellow with Vallejo Game Ink. You can use any, you could use even a yellow paint. Basically just paint them yellow because then when we wash them later, it'll create a nice uh, orange with yellow highlights. The saddle leather and the straps and things like that were highlighted with Tuscore fur. Here's that orange wash I was talking about. It's Fugan orange over yellow, which creates a yellow highlighted orange tassel. Very similar in this case to the, um, the fins. Actually kind of too similar, but that's cool. The blue-green armor is washed with Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamian Medium 50-50 mix just to give it some... You could kind of vary it a little bit. You can maybe put a little more Lamian if you don't want to darken it too much just to give it some uh, contrast and shade. So here's how I did these infamous plastic stands that everybody despises. And I don't blame them because the connection point is really, really small. Um, but what I use is plastic glue because that's going to fuse the plastic and that I think is better than using super glue in this case, which is brittle and can snap. 
here what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of the primer and paint that has gotten onto that little nub by using very carefully using my knife uh, so as not to wreck the paint job we've got here because what you want to do is create a plastic on plastic connection for the as you see here the plastic cement that I'm applying I just brush it on a little this is Tamiya plastic cement so that's going to start the plastic melting including on this clear plastic it works well and then you hold it onto there you know check that it's lined up properly in terms of being vertical in terms of being um, you know, not swaying side to side so to speak you want it basically lined up nice and straight with the body and you're gonna hold it in place it really doesn't take very long to set or at least to start setting and once you've got it so it is setting and it's going to stand up on its own then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the eels body in like a little you know, I set up four pots of paint and I just laid him perfectly vertical on his back and let that dry for a while. Here you can see the three eels with their stands sticking out of their guts. Uh, each of them set up in a little stand that I made um, from pots of paint and just, you, I let them set and cure for quite some time so they were strong. And then it's a simple matter of applying some of that same glue both to the bottom of the plastic stand itself and then in kind of like a little pool on the spot on the black base you want to put it because I was really trying to get both plastics to melt a fair bit so that they were really going to fuse and create a nice strong bond and so far they're they're great the the eels have not broken off and they seem pretty solid I mean I'm not gonna like be really rough with them but so far so good so here's the mistake I made hopefully you can see what I'm talking about one of the guys is leaving the water and going on shore and two of them are leaving the shore and going to the water so it looks like one guy forgot something and is heading back to camp or something i don't know why i did that but whatever <laughs> i'm gonna live with it hopefully this has been useful leave any questions below if you have any any comments please like share subscribe all that good stuff follow me on social media if you want to see whip and my stream of consciousness about the hobby. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.